G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. There's a variety of router lifts available. And so, you know, what do you need them to do? What are you really looking for? The two most important things, obviously, is you need to be able to change the height of your router bit. It's really simple. It's got to be easy and it's got to be accurate and you've got to be able to lock it off. The second thing is you've got to be able to raise that router right up so that you can change the bit. And that's also got to be easy and safe uh, and because it's something that you do constantly, or at least I do, I'm changing bits all the time. And the third thing is durability. I want to look at a couple of different systems um, from something quite simple to some more complicated. The first one I'll look at involves mounting a Triton motor directly onto a mounting plate and using the lifting screw on the Triton router itself. The second system is a router lift mechanism that you can fit any motor body to. And the third system is a uh, router lift that you fit a round body motor to that is exclusively designed to be used in a router table rather than using your plunge router in your router table and swapping it in and out. So we'll start with a simple system. In Australia, the Triton plunge router is one of the most common routers to use in a router table situation, or you know, generally people are using it in a router table and then taking it out and using it as a plunge router as well. Sherwood has brought out this mounting plate, which you can mount your Triton router directly to, it means that you're not using an external router lift. You're actually using the lifting screw which comes on the Triton router. It's got the hole drilled in the plate so that you can use the lifter straight through without any modifications. It's really simple to use. Here are the advantages and disadvantages. It's relatively inexpensive. You don't have to drill anything or um, mount anything in any special way. You just screw the Triton router directly onto it and you can be lowering and raising straight away, put it straight into your table. Some of the trickier things, and this applies to a couple different lifting mechanisms, is there are some processes that you need to do under the table as well as above the table. We'll start with the simplest thing of just raising it up and down to get different heights on your router bit. You just place the turning handle through this hole in the top. It engages with the little nut well, it's a little bullet nut that's on the Triton, and then you can raise and lower the height in that way. Now, to lock that off, you still need to reach under the table and engage that locking lever. You need to loosen that to raise it, tighten it when you've set the height. That's not terribly complicated, it's only two processes. When you go to change the router bit, you need to bring the whole motor body as far up as it will go. In order to do that, you need to make sure that the little locking switch that turns the motor on and off at the back is off, it's disengaged, because you can't bring that to full height if that is turned on. Now, it might seem obvious that that's gonna be turned off, except on these tables where you have an additional safety switch, usually that back switch is left on all the time because you're turning the router on and off using the safety switch. So even though the motor isn't running, that switch at the back is turned on. Like I said, to get this to full height, you need to disengage that back switch. That allows the uh, motor to come to full height and it allows the spindle lock to engage, which is a little pin that pops in to the uh, spindle itself and allows you to then use a spanner to tighten or loosen the nut on the collet. If you don't allow that spindle lock to engage, you just don't have anything to hold the collet against to turn it. It'll just turn as you try and rotate it. So, all the way up, turn it slightly and the spindle lock engages. Then you can use your spanner to loosen it off, put your bit in, tighten it up, and then you can just drop it down. As soon as you see that spindle lock disengage, you can re-engage that rear switch and then you're ready to go again by turning your router on and off using the safety switch at the front. Again, to set your height, you wanna lock off that back lever and then you're ready to go. So there are a few bits and pieces there because you are working a little bit under the table and a little bit above. That's pretty common with these kind of basic systems. One other thing to consider is with this system, 
you're relying on the lifting capability of the Triton router itself. Now, all routers have some problems occasionally with dust getting into that uh, lifting turret, the, uh, the geared uh, piston piece that raises it up and down. So there have been some occasions where I've had to take my Triton router apart and clean that fully out. I assume that other companies, other brands have a similar problem. If you're then moving into a dedicated router lift, some of those components are more exposed, which makes them easier to clean, and you're not relying on that internal screw component of the router itself. So now we're gonna have a look at a dedicated router lift system that you can use any motor body on. This next style of router lift actually has a lifting mechanism independent of your motor body. So you can use any kind of router you want. The mounting plate has a ton of holes that will match a variety of routers. What you do is you mount your router to the mounting plate first, and then you sit that mounting plate into the bottom of the lifting mechanism. You tighten those little um, sliding square nuts up against that plate, and then you flip the whole thing over and drop it down into your router table. Once it's installed, the operation is fairly simple. Um, you're raising and lowering the router body through the top as you were in the previous one, but you can also lock off the height through the top rather than reaching around the table. So that's one advantage. So you've got your turning stick, which is actually turning this new lifting mechanism, not the turning screw on your router. And then you've got a little locking hex nut here that locks off the height. So once you've changed your route a bit, adjusting the height is simple, it's all done through the top. That's one advantage of using a system like this. Second advantage obviously is you can use any router you like. Third advantage is you have really high accuracy, potentially more than you would get by using the turning screw on your router. So this lifting mechanism is designed so that a full rotation is exactly two millimeters. Uh, which means you've got smaller gradations that you can use to actually get really accurate um, adjustments in height. There's very little slop in this screw. You feel really good tension there, which means that when you move it, it's not falling back into position. There's no uh, looseness in that mechanism. And when you tighten it off, it is well and truly locked. And I can vouch for that. I've used this you know, number, over a number of years in prof a professional manner. If you've seen any of the router bit series, you will have seen me do this operation countless times. Um, but to change this bit, you bring the height all the way up. As in the pre previous um, demonstration that I did, you need to make sure that the on and off switch underneath is disengaged so that you can reach full height, so that the spindle lock engages, so that you can then undo the collet. Um, and then the operation to lower that once you've changed your bit is just that in reverse you drop it down, then you can engage that power um, switch, which means the uh, spindle lock is disengaged and then you're ready to route. Now, it does mean you're, as before, working a little bit below the table and above, but look, it's a process that I've gotten used to and um, it hasn't, you know, it doesn't really get in the way. Something to keep in mind is if you are gonna be using a uh, dust box so that you get good extraction on this, you need to make sure that your router uh, motor, when it's installed on the plate, fits within that dust enclosure. So that usually means offsetting it slightly if you've got large handles so that they fit into the corners of those dust extraction boxes. All of the uh, screw componentry that operates this lift is uh, really solid and really well made. It's also exposed, which means that when you need to clean it to make sure that it's running freely, you don't have to take anything apart. You can just get in there with a dust blower, air gun, clean off all the sawdust, and that'll keep you in free motion without getting bits all clogged up with dust, which can happen working internally uh, using the, the lift that exists internally in, say, a Triton or another router body itself. What we're gonna look at now is a router lift system that uses a dedicated round body motor. So instead of throwing your plunge router, your Triton or some other brand, into the router lift and then having to take it out if you want to use it for something else and put it back in, which is no small task, it takes some time. This involves getting a dedicated motor that stays in your, in your router table and that's all it's used for. 
Now, for me, in my shop, that is absolutely the, cl the clear choice because I don't wanna be pulling my Triton in and out. As it currently stands, I am still using my Triton in my router table, but I literally never take it out. So I've just lost the use of, of that particular plunge router. And in, in the future, future, in my future, future uh, router videos, you'll probably see me using this a lot more. So this is a dedicated cradle that holds this round motor. Um, it's a product that Shield has developed independently. There aren't a lot of round body systems like this, especially in Australia. So it's a great motor itself. It's powerful. It goes in really simply. And it actually really simplifies the operation of changing the bits and changing the height. So it totally does away with having to go underneath the table and locking components off or turning the switch on and off or any of that. Everything is done from above, which for me is just such a no-brainer. It makes the whole operation a lot simpler. I'm just gonna throw this in the table and I'll show you those operations. You'll notice this is a different router table. Just ignore it. This is just the router table this happened to be in. It has nothing to do with the Incra fence, although that is a great product. Um, there is a whole video specifically about this round body motor, how to install it and some other advantages. You can check that out in the link just here. Uh, this is just more looking at the lifting mechanism. Once this is installed in the table, apart from adjusting the speed, which I do fairly rarely, you're not gonna have to go under there and do anything ever again, theoretically. So, to adjust the height, it's still just got the turning dial and the locking dial, the same as the previous lift. Functionally, it's exactly the same. But you can just bring this all the way to the top without having to go in and turn off that locking power switch, which is the case for a Triton router. Some other, tri other routers will have a different mechanism. With this motor body, you have two nuts which allows you to use a double spanner system to lock and unlock the spindle from above the table. So you can change it around a bit that way. Put it down, lock it off and you're ready to go. So like I said, no going underneath, no locking it off, no turning it on and off underneath the table. It's all just set, it'll stay there, it's ready to go in that way. So. Obviously for this system, you're not just buying a lift, you are buying a motor body, so you're gonna pay a bit more for it, but it means you have a dedicated machine. It's like you wouldn't use a table saw that you had to constantly take your circular saw in and out of, although some people have done that. Uh, and I feel the same way about a router table. It's a machine that I use constantly, and so I want it to have a dedicated motor that I'm not pulling it apart every time I wanna do some plunge routing. So the long and the short of this is if you've got a Triton motor body, the cheapest solution for um, you know occasional use or you know semi-regular use is just get the mounting plate. You can put it straight on, raise it up and down. If you want a better, more accurate lift, and you want to use a Triton or any other router, get that uh, individual lifting mechanism. But if you want a dedicated machine with a solid motor that you don't have to mess around under the table as well as on the top just go straight to the round body motor with the lift. It makes this a proper woodworking machine rather than something that you're taking apart. There's a whole bunch of links below for all of these products. Um, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. We have a bunch of other videos on um, routing and other fun woodworking paraphernalia.